Okay, this is Gene Thorpe and a little Red Rooster TV, and I'm with the voiceover band. I'm here with Skip Cron. Hello. He's got Ray-Ban wraparound sunglasses. This is Al Purdy. Oh, I've got glasses. Al Purdy's got glasses too, but he didn't put them on yet. Not yet. And we're here with Steve Archer from the Lincoln News Messenger, and he's a writer extraordinaire. He's going to do a little interview and article on the band. So, Steve, um, but before we get started on that, what is your background in journalism and that type of thing? How did you get started? Well, I got started, um, it's an interesting story. I was a political science major at American River College, and a girlfriend of mine had uh, read an uh, English paper I turned, was ready to turn in. She said that I had a very journalistic style. I thought I would follow up on that because she was a very bright young lady. And um, I was also looking for a way to uh, stay in politics without becoming a uh, member of either party. Nice. And uh, uh, journalism has allowed me to continue throughout my adult life, uh, be a part of politics, and yet be a part from politics. Nice. I like that. Part of politics and a part from politics. That's very good. It's a good place okay. to be now. Yeah. <laughs> Interested, but... Yeah. So one of the things I was explaining to the guys, you know, like the way the Beatles did their interviews, they always had these nice looks on their faces. They were so handsome that they always had this... <laughs> See, look at this one right here. Anyway, go ahead and start your interview then. Okay, and um, just uh, for my benefit, if we could, um, as much as possible, not talk over each other when we're answering the questions, and um, for lack of a better process, let's start with Al and go to Jean and then skip throughout the course of the interview. That'll just be easier on me to keep everybody straight, and uh, I think it'll make it a smoother interview to follow in the video. Very good. Okay. So, um, starting with Al. Uh, how old were you when you first started playing music, and what was the instrument that you first picked up? Twelve and trumpet. Wow. Actually, no, I take that back. Let me change that. Ten and piano. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so I'm uh, guessing that at twelve you also picked up the trumpet. No, there was a there was a there was a process there. Uh -huh. I was practicing the piano endlessly. I hated it. I went to school in Indiana in the fifties, and a boy that played piano was not cool. And uh, I just couldn't I couldn't get any of the stuff. I couldn't get the left hand and the right hand. I, I just couldn't get it. So I kept going to this this ancient lady that was the teacher every Wednesday night after school. And you know, God, she. We had the John Thompson's beginner method, and she'd write the date, like 9 15, uh, 55. Carry me back to old Virginia. Okay, practice <laughs> this, and we'll do it next week. Next week, I didn't have it any better than I had it this week. She'd scratch it out, and she'd be 9 22, 55. And finally, my mother got so frustrated, my parents were so, because my sister's a great musician, and uh, they got so frustrated with me, you know, they just threw in the hat, you know. They said, you know, you, you've done pretty well on piano. It's like, oh, okay. Do you have an instrument you'd really like to play? Yes, trumpet. <laughs> I wanted to be like Harry James with a pencil mustache and a white dinner jacket. I didn't want to play a piano like Liberace. That's how I got started. Well, I got still a, don't. I can't, I can't play anything on it. I, never mind the keyboards. Anyway, make a long story short, I got in Sac State and then we're in a dorm and some guys are putting a surf band together. And they said, well, we need a bass player. I said, hmm. Well, basically, in my mind, I said, what's that, you know? So I went out and I found this bass guitar and I learned to play. You don't need many chops to play in a surf band. And uh, that's how I got started. It was about 18, 19 and progressed from there to playing in beer bars and failing in college and you know i was making 25 a night at the zombie zula so what did i need a stinking college degree for <laughs> anyway so here we are what 50 years later guys and that's that's my story i'm gonna have to stick to it all right 
Uh, thank you, Al. Yeah, of course. Gene, uh, same question for you. Well, okay, my dad <clears throat> was a professional piano player and we lived in New York City. And the first thing I can remember are guys coming up and down the stairs. In fact, I remember car them carrying up the piano up the stairs. And, um, and then trumpet players and different musicians would come up. And my uncle Tony was an acrobat in the circus. My dad played for a circus. And um, so at two o'clock, uh, two years old, I started singing Cruising Down the River. That was my first song. Then my dad got me a xylophone and some records. And we lived in the third story in Stillwell Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. And I took the records and I threw them like frisbees all down the neighborhood. And that was my start in music. There were guitars around, <clears throat> but the xylophone and the piano. I would always tinkle on both of those. And uh, what type of band did your dad play piano for? Well, he played in various different bands. They, in New York City, in upstate New York, in the Catskills, they would have, um, you know, these bands that would go around and play music. And my dad couldn't read music. But if no one knew, you know, he'd put the music in front of him and he'd watch the guitar player's hands, the bass player's hands, and all of this, and he had a very good ear, and he would play along, and nobody would know unless they had him read sheet music uh, as a soloist, and he didn't know the song before. So, um, but he played in all different kinds of bands. But the circus band, you know, they'd have trumpets and calliopes and stuff. Yeah, and he and he was a piano player, so that was it. Okay, yeah. and um, do you happen to read music yourself? No. Al is probably the most music theory guy in our band. Okay. <laughs> That's not saying a lot. <laughs> Skip, how about you? Oh, I'm not sure how old I was, whatever, uh, fifth grade, whatever that is. And I was, uh, I played tambourine and uh, was the front man of a band called Hedrick's Henchmen in Arlington Heights Elementary School. <laughs> we won the talent show playing Hey There Little Red Riding Hood by Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. At least that's my recollection of it. And I realized that in my career I could probably play drums as good as the guy playing drums for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing drums and uh, just been at it ever since. I actually have a picture of him at that talent show. And I've got it posted on uh, the website, and I'll, I think I'll get it out and put it into this, uh, into this interview. I like that idea. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, 